Ramayana Sopanam is an introduction to the great remarkable Itihasa Ramayana. It will cover all elements of Ramayana from different versions of the epic to a variety of characters, incidents, insightful conversation, life lessons, and many more. Common doubts prevalent in the minds of seekers, for instance, why Sita was banished for no fault of hers, why Bali was killed by Sri Rama by remaining hidden from the view, etc., will be cleared. Moving on to the lecture, knowing the speaker is very much a prerequisite because it helps the listener in valuing the knowledge that they receive from the speaker. So, without much delay, I welcome Brahmachari Achdamada Chaitanyaji, Principal Amrita School of Spiritual and Cultural Studies. Brahmachari Achdamada Chaitanya serves as Principal Amrita School of Spiritual and Cultural Studies, Amrita Vishwavidya Pitam. He has more than 30 years of experience in uh, teaching and he completed his PhD in 1997 from Cochin University. Since then, he has continued his extensive study of Indian culture under the guidance of Amma, Sadhguru Sri Mata Amrathandamai Devi. He also serves as the associate editor of Matruvani, the spiritual monthly magazine of Mata Amrathandamai Mat. He has given spiritual talks in many temples across Kerala, and his satsangs are regularly being aired on Amrita TV as well. So he will be addressing us today on the topic, Introduction to Ramayana. Without further delay, over to you, Swami. Let me start prostrating at the lotus feet of my beloved Amma Guru. Jaya Mutha Balavagunthanavati Tejo Mayim Naishtigim Snitha Panga Vilokini Bhagavati Mandas Nidashrim Ki Vatsalya Amrita Varishini Sumuturam Sangirtana Lapini Shamangim Matusitta Sutti Amrita Nandakmita Mishari Since the topic is Ramayana, let us bow down to the great Rishi Valmiki. Kavindram Naomi Valmiki Yasya Ramayani Katha Chagora Iva Chinvanti Chandriga Mivasathavaha. So this uh, Tribute to Valmiki, the author of Ramayana is, its meaning is like this. Kavindram Naomi Valmiki, I bow down to the Lord of Poets, Kavindram, who is Valmiki. And his contribution to the humanity is Ramayana Katha. And what is he? impact or influence or greatness of Ramayana. Yesya Ramayani Katha Chakora Iva Chinvandi Chandriga Mivasathava whose Ramayana is enjoyed or relished by all good people. Sathavaha, all noble people. Like the mythological bird Chakora relishes on Moonlight. So this is a poetic imaginary imagination that uh, the chakora is a bird which which lives on moonlight. It drinks moonlight and sustains. So it is such a pure bird that it can sustain itself only by drinking moonlight. So Ramayana is like moonlight. And it is from the moon Valmiki. And this moonlight is released by all noble people of the world, like Chakora and Joyce. So, with these prostrations to the poet Valmiki, the Rishi Valmiki, let us come to the topic. The topic of today's discussion is introduction to Ramayana. I will speak 
maybe for uh, 40 minutes maximum i will try to restrict my talk to 40 minutes and after that if possible we will have some interactions and the first thing that i would like to tell you is introducing ramayana is a very difficult task just like introducing the river ganges river ganga or introducing the river mahanadi which is which flows through many states of india and uh, as well as ganga also flows through many many states of india starting from himalayas himalayas and flowing through the plain and reaching the ocean at calcutta hubli so how can one introduce ganga to anyone else nobody can introduce ganga to anyone else in the same way nobody can introduce mahanadi which spreads on a lot of uh, places in uh, many states so the same difficulty is faced by anyone who wants to introduce ramayana still we will try to get introduced into ramayana there is a famous uh, saying about ramayana first of all i would like to tell you that there are many ramayanas and in sanskrit the main, the famous ramayanas are valmiki's ramayana and another adhyatma ramayana so about adhyatma ramayana it is said that kurari giri sambhuta ramasagara gamini unadu bhuvanam punya ramayana mahatam adhyatma ram gangeyam unadi bhuvanam pray kurari giri sambhuta ramasagara gamini adhyatma ram gangeyam unadi bhuvanam pray adhyatma ram ganga which is a ganges river ganges called adhyatma ramayana which starts from kurari giri the mountain of lord shiva it starts from the mountain that is lord shiva and it reaches rama sagara the ocean that is rama and it is a adhyatma rama ganga it is the ramayana which can be compared to the river ganges and it sanctifies the whole three world so here the origin is compared to lord shiva and the target it is compared to lord rama and the whole ramayana adhyatma ramayana is compared to a ganga a river ganges and in the same way valmiki ramayana also is compared to mahanadi valmiki giri sambhuta ramaga sagara gamini punadi bhuvana adhya punadi bhuvanam punya ramayana mahanadi ramayana is a mahanadi which starts from valmiki the, the 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 mountain valmiki and which flows to the river rama to this ocean rama and it sanctifies the whole world so these are the comparisons given about ramayana they are like great rivers and we can dip in these rivers take a dip in these rivers and enjoy these rivers in many ways but introducing them to anyone with a few words is real difficult still i will try my best to introduce ramayana its di different aspects in the stipulated time and then we will have some interactions so it is said that in 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 adhyatma ramayana it is said that ramayanam shatakodi pravistaram 100 crores of ramayana are there which means there are diverse works related to rama written by many great rishis scholars boy etc but we cannot enjoy all these ramayana anyway in this introduction i will mention a few of them we will limit our discussion mainly on ramayana of valmiki and maybe we will touch some other ramayana also in this way i would like to introduce ramayana to all of you 
the most authentic ramayana is undoubtedly valmiki ramayana and before we discuss about valmiki's ramayana we will have to discuss about valmiki the rishi who contributed or who gave us this ramayana there are a few stories about valmiki they are present in many texts one in skanda purana and another in brahmanda purana so even though there are some differences in the stories the main theme is the same valmiki was a dacoit he was uh, living in a forest robbing or looting the passengers the forest travelers and making a livelihood to himself and his family so he became a nightmare for all who travels through that forest so one day the sage narada happens to travel through that forest it is according to brahmanda purana <coughs> so this dacoit his name was ratnagara he he jumps in front of uh, narada and tries to rob him of all his possessions but narada tells him that i don't have any possessions with me the other version which is present in skanda purana sagara khanda there it is the seven rishis the great saptarishis that come in the way of this dacoit that nagara and it is the saptarishis famous seven rishis of indian spiritual literature they are they, this that nagara approaches them and they say that we don't have any possession with us we are mendicants we don't hold anything we don't save anything for us we live on what we get each day so in any way let it be narada or let it be saptarshis the culmination of the story is like this these sages advises narada they ask narada sorry they ask that nagara why are you doing all these uh, evil acts this criminal acts this violent acts killing all the people in this way in this forest path and looting their belongings then this ratnagara says i am doing all this to protect my family then the rishis ask him do you think that you are incurring sin through this acts then this uh, dacoit says yes i i know that uh, this is not a righteous act but still i have to do it for my family then they ask do you think that what you gain is shared by your family but the sin that you are you accrue you accumulate through your evil actions will that also be shared by your family then this ratnagara says of course they are sharing my physical my material gains then why don't they share my sins also then the rishis say you go and ask them ask your family members whether they will share your sins then this dacoit leaves that place asking them to stay there and he reaches his family and asks his wife and his father is also there ask them whether whether my sins are all, will also be shared by you then they say especially his wife says never once actions once karma cannot be shared by anyone else the person who commits the karma who does the karma alone will have to reap the fruits of the karma nobody else can share the fruits of the karma on hearing this ratnagara becomes shocked he returns with a heavy mind 
and he surrenders himself at the feet of these rishis and asks them to redeem him, to help him out of these sins. So the rishis advise him or initiates him into the Rama Mantra and tells him that you go on chanting this Rama Mantra sitting somewhere here and that will eradicate all your sins. And this Ratnagara immediately follows their advice and starts chanting that Rama Mantra, the divine name of Lord Rama. And these Rishis leave that place. And after decades, these Rishis come back. And they search for this Ratnagara. But they cannot see Ratnagara. But at the place where Ratnagara was seated, they see an anthill, an anthill formed and they hear the name of Rama, the Rama Mantra sound coming from this anthill. And the anthill is called in Sanskrit Valmiga. So they break open this anthill and a great Rishi comes out of that anthill. And since that person comes from Valmigam, they name him Valmigi, meaning one who comes out of a, one who has come out of a Valmigi. And thus the Ratnagara, the, the decoit Ratnagara transforms himself into a great Rishi, Valmigi, by the sheer power of the name of Ram. So this is the background story of the author of Valmigi Ramayana, of or Ramayana. And it is Valmigi's Ramayana, which is, which is, uh, which, which becomes the source book of all other Ramayanas, which are innumerable in number. And the original one was created by this Valmigi. Now, let us discuss about some other Ramayanas. Now I, I have told you about Valmiki's Ramayana and some other main Ramayanas. One is Adhyatma Ramayana, which is in Sanskrit itself. And there are there is a little difference. There are some differences between Adhyatma Ramayana and Valmiki Ramayana that we will discuss later. And then there is the famous Vasishta Ramayana in Sanskrit, which is a philosophical work which follows the story of Rama as narrated by Valmiki. But the main character in this Valmiki, in this Vasishta Ramayana is Sage Vasishta. And it is a dialogue between Sage Vasishta and Rama and it reveals great philosophical revelations, Advaitic philosophy. And there are other Sanskrit Ramayanas like Adbuda Ramayana, Ananda Ramayana, many Ramayanas are. And in regional languages also there are many Ramayanas, which all mainly follow Valmiki's Ramayana. The most important regional Ramayana, vernacular Ramayanas, most important of all vernacular Ramayanas is the Hindi Tulsi Dasa's Ramayana, which is called Ramacharita Malas which was created by the great poet Saint Tulsi Dasa maybe some 400 years back, 450 years back. Then there is a famous Ramayana in Bengali, which is called Krutivasa Ramayana. Then there is a famous Kamba Ramayana in Tamil language, written by the great poet Kamba of Tamil. And in Malayalam, there is a famous Ramayana Kilipat Ramayana, which is also called Malayalam Adhyatma Ramayana, which is somewhat a free translation for the Sanskrit Adhyatma Ramayana. Then there is Marathi Ramayana, which is called Havartha Ramayana or Eganathi Ramayana. And there is Telugu Ramayana called Ranganatha Ramayana, called after the author Ranganatha. 
and there is kannada ramayana which is called toravai ramayana then there is nepali ramayana and in all indian vernaculars there are ramayanas so this tells us the influence of ramayana on the indian society and all these ramayanas follow their regional style that is the beauty of it in hindi you will see the meters used as the meters of hindi language in malayalam you will see that the meters used in this erthachan's malayalam kilipada ramayana are the meters of malayalam language in the same way the regional style of poetry is followed by the regional poets when they write their ramayana but the story is mainly valmiki's ramayana even though it is a translation of adhyatma ramayana still it is valmiki's ramayana only because the story mainly follows valmiki's ramayana even in adhyatma ramayana so these are the different ramayana some of the main different ramayana which are present in india and also outside india there are many ramayana in cambodia in thailand in korea in many other state Uh, countries there are ramayanas and the story may be a little different the characters relations may be different the the structure or the story line may be a little different but the main characters are the same in all the all the all the all the ramayanas only some relations may be different for example some ramayanas outside india may have sita as the sister of rama and lakshmana while in more, almost all of indian languages the ramayana still follow sita as the husband of uh, as the wife of ram sri ram so such, such differences may be found in in, in other uh, ramayanas outside india even in inside india some of the vernacular ramayanas may deviate in the relations of the characters its minute changes can be there so this is a very broad picture of the different ramayanas that are present or that is that are available now let us come because our uh, main study is uh, valmiki's ramayana now let us come to the valmiki's ramayana what is the structure of valmiki's ramayana so as i told you after this dacoit ratnakara transforms himself into the sage valmiki he led a life of a of a what do you say tapasvi of a ascetic and he was living in his hut doing all the penances all the rituals daily and one day the great narada rishi comes to his hut on that occasion valmiki puts a question to narada this is the of this is the opening verse of valmiki's ramayana the first verse of valmiki's ramayana so now i am presenting a, a, a very very brief picture of valmiki's ramayana the so first verse opening verse of valmiki's ramayana is like this valmiki asks narada a question not one question many questions tapas swadhyaya niradam तपस्वी वाग्विदांबर नारद परीप्रच्छ वाल्मीकिर्मुनिपुंगव ओपनिंग वर्ड वाल्मीकि द ग्रेट सेज आस्ट नारद दीज क्वेश्चन दीज बोथ ऑफ दीज सेज वर् तपस्वाध्याय निरत तपस्वी वाग्विदांबर दे वर् मास्टर्स ऑफ वर्ड्स दे वर् ग्रेट असेटिक्स they always spent their time in studying themselves swadhyaya they always were introvert and watching their own self studying their own self so this type of ascetic life they were leading so both were really competent ascetics and one of them valmiki asked narada narada is a person who travels in the three worlds always so that is a special nature of narada in all our in all our in indian epics and the puranas you will see narada always roaming around 
in all the three worlds so he will bring all news to everyone so to that narada valmiki asks what does he ask he asks konvasmin samradam loge gunavan kashta viryavan dharmatyascha kritnascha satyavakyo dhramratah charitrena cha samyuktah a many many questions he asks the beginning of the question is konvasmin samradam loge asmin samradam loge at present in this world who is gunavan konvasmin samradam loge gunavan who is endowed with all good qualities kascha viryavan who is endowed with valor dharmatyascha who knows dharma kritnascha who knows the karma of everyone dharmatyascha kritnascha and who is grateful also kritnya has another word meaning who is always full of gratitude dharmatyascha kritnascha satyavakyo dhramvrataha one who always sticks to his word who never deviates from his word satyavakyo dhramvrataha one who never steps back from any action that he has undertaken so all these qualities some 32 or more than 30 qualities are mentioned by valmiki and he asks if there is any person in this world at this present age living at this time who is endowed with all these qualities so after this long question is put narada answers this is the first chapter of valmiki sravana and what narada answers is bahavo durlabha chaivum yetvaya kirtida gunaha munave mune vakshyamyaham burtva tair yukta shoyadam naraha bahavo durlabha chaiva yetvaya kirtida gunaha the qualities that you have mentioned are very rare many of them are very rare still mune vakshyamyaham burtva tair yukta suyadam naraha still i will tell you about a person a naraha a human being who is endowed with all these qualities please hear from me so narada says there is a person who is endowed with all these qualities and he is a human being and i will tell you about him you please hear from me telling like this he he gives a picture of shri rama lord rama to nara to to palmi and all the qualities of rama are mentioned by narada in this first chapter of this uh, valmiki ramayana and the whole valmiki ramayana itself is abridged in this first chapter and the story till the end of ramayana is briefly presented in this chapter and it is called samkshepa ramayana this first chapter is called samkshepa ramayana and this is the beginning this is the the opening of valmiki ramayana so why i mentioned this because one very important thing is there what narada answers is mune vakshyam yaham budva tair yukta shruyadam naraha i shall tell you about a human being who is endowed with all these qualities so in valmiki ramayana rama is a human being in it generally speaking rama is a human being but we can see rama as a avatara of lord every one of us maybe all of us have a general knowledge that rama is the avatara of lord vishnu and in valmiki ramayana also it is said that lord vishnu took avatara as, as rama but mainly the portrayal of rama in valmiki ramayana is as a human being even though lord vishnu has come to the earth he lives on this earth as a human being rama never reveals that he is lord of the world even narada in this beginning chapter presents rama as a human being 
and in the end in the yuddha kanda the last chapter of valmiki ramayana there is an annexure which is called uttara kanda we will discuss about it later but in the last kanda which is the sixth kanda yuddha kanda the section kanda means section there at the end of the war between rama and ravana when rama conquers ravana all the celestial beings come all the rishis come and they worship rama they him rama they extol rama praise rama calling him lord vishnu lord rudra lord yama lord varuna all the deities you are lord vishnu you are lord yama you are lord rudra you are lord brahma all these types of praises are showered on rama but rama in the end says his answer to all these praises was atmanam manusham manye ramam dasharadhatmajam i consider myself as a human being the son of dasharatha this is what rama answers so we must keep in our mind that in valmiki ramayana rama is a human being he is a purushottama he is called matrika purushottama or maryada purushottama so rama's character in the valmiki ramayana is that of a human being who extols in all his activities in all his fields of activities everywhere he represents the perfect human being still you can see some of human <coughs> weaknesses sorry a few very rarely you will see some human weaknesses also in valmiki ramayana but we should not forget that valmiki has depicted valmiki has portrayed sri rama as a human being but when we come to other ramayanas like the adhyatma ramayana of sanskrit or malayalam or tulsidasas rama charita manasam there we will see rama as the purna avatara the full the perfect incarnation of lord vishnu but in valmiki ramayana it is not like that that we have to keep it in mind keep in mind so this is the opening portion of ramayana and i will i would like to very briefly state or or or, or narrate the story the story you may be knowing and we will later in this course we will be discussing the story line in detail but still for introducing ramayana we will have to know about the story somewhat in general so i would like to tell you so rama takes birth as dasharatha's son he had three brothers bharata lakshmana and shatrughna dasharatha had three wives kausalya kaigeyi and sumitra dasharatha was the king of the sun dynasty and in sun dynasty only rama takes birth and he gets his education from his gurus mainly vasishta and also another sage vishwamitra then he marries the princess of uh, janaka sita janaka was the king of mithila and after the marriage they come back to ayodhya where rama was born and when rama's coronation as the prince was almost about to happen rama's stepmother kaige intervenes and asks dasharatha two boons which was given to her or offered to her many years back and with those boons she sends rama to exile for 14 years and she wants her son bharata to become the king of or the prince of ayodhya but when rama leaves everybody insisted that rama should not leave but rama wanted to keep his father's word so he leaves to the forest and because of the separation from rama dasharatha passes away and bharata who was not present there at that time who was in his maternal house in his uh, in his uh, he who, who, was, who was with his uncle maternal uncle he was brought back and when he comes back he explicitly refuses the kingdom offered to her by to him by his uh, mother and he after the cremation or the final rites of his father he goes to forest and tries to bring back rama to ayodhya and make him the next king 
but rama doesn't yield to bharadas request because he has to keep his father's father's word he has to make his father he has to redeem his father from untruth from breaking word so he lives in the forest for 14 years for that 14 years he enters bharada the kingdom and bharada rules as a representative of rama 14 years and rama goes to the forest and in the forest his wife sita was abducted by ravana the, the demon king and rama goes in search of sita to ravana's kingdom which is in lanka the present day sri lanka and he fights a fierce battle with ravana and he kills ravana and he takes sita back and they come back to ayodhya and rama's coronation happens after that 14 years and then they live there and the rama raja is uh, established which is full of all righteousness which is full of uh, dharma there is not an iota of adharma in rama's kingdom so there valmiki ramayana ends and there is an annexer as i told you in which the abandoning of sita the story of abandoning of sita is 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 uh, narrated and some of the scholars says that this is not a part of the original valmiki ramayana anyway there is a dispute about this uttarakhanda the annexure uttarakhanda itself means which is of a later creation it is later kanda of valmiki ramayana but this uttarakhanda is present in all ramayana even in adhyatma ramayana you can see but in tulsi dasas ramacharita manasam you cannot see this uttarakhanda but in many other works on ramayana you can see this uttarakhanda still it is a disputed topic whether uttarakhanda is a part of the real original valmiki ramayana <coughs> anyway this is the storyline of valmiki ramayana in very in, in brief so how valmiki ramayana is uh, is is uh, arranged what is the structure of valmiki ramayana valmiki ramayana is broadly classified into six kandas as i mentioned the kandas means sections then each sections will have different chapters which are called sargas so which are the six kandas first is bala kanda second is ayodhya kanda third is aranya kanda fourth is kishkinda kanda fifth is sundara kanda and sixth is yuddha kanda and in the end the annexure uttara kanda adhyatma ramayana is also classified in the same way bala kanda ayodhya kanda aranya kanda kishkinda kanda sundara kanda and yuddha kanda then uttara kanda tulasi dasa ramayana is or ramacharita manasam is uh, these are the three very important ramayanas of india so that is why i mentioned or i discuss tulasi dasa ramayana also in bichi so tulasi dasa ramayana is also divided into bala kanda ayodhya kanda aranya kanda kishkinda kanda sundara kanda and then lanka kanda and there is an uttara kanda in tulasi dasa ramayana which is not the uttara kanda of other ramayanas in which rama abandons sita in tulasi dasa ramayana the uttara kanda which is the part of the real creation the, the original creation of tulasi dasa ramayana the uttara kanda is the philosophical ideals that tulasi dasa wants to tell us that is mentioned in the uttara kanda so this is the broad classification of tulasi dasa of, of the ramayanas and the another beautiful thing is that tulasi dasa ramayana is divided in another way also this self this these seven kandas are given another name the names are prathama sobhanam dvitiya sobhan tridiya sobhanam chadurtha sobhanam panchama sobhanam shashta sobhanam saptama sobhanam so our name to this course the ramayana sobhanam find justification in this tulasi dasa ramayana the name of the five, seven kandas are sobhanams in uttara tulasi dasa ramayana sobhanam means steps so tulasi dasa ramayana is ramacharita manasam manasam is a lake the lake that is on the himalayas but tulasi dasa says that this lake is in the heart of lord shiva and to enter into this lake you have seven steps so if you descend these seven steps you will reach the ramacharita manasam which is the lake 
so these are the steps to reach the ramacharitam the story of ram so this is the classification or the or the name given to different kandas by tulasidas so i just casually mentioned these uh, seven names ramayana because our course name is also ramayana sobhan so there are seven sobhan names tulasidas as ramayana ramacharitam manas so this is the structure of ramayana and another thing i would like to tell you is tulasi valmiki's ramayana mainly uses a sanskrit meter called anushtu which has 32 syllables in each verse and which is divided into four lines each lines will have eight syllables and the total four lines will have 32 syllables but there are other meters also used but mainly this anushtu with eight lines eight uh, syllables in one line is used 32 syllables one verse so this is a very broad structure of valmiki ramayana now let us come to another topic this is these are all introductory things about valmiki uh, of, of uh, introductory things about ramayana so i think the time has now become i have exceeded the time limit so now we have introduced ramayana its structure and its origin i have introduced now uh, without uh, introducing a little about uh, ramayana's impact and message i think this uh, this uh, uh, lecture will not be complete so i would like to mention some of the messages that while that ramayana gives us ramayana is a text which can be approached in three ways from three in three dimensions we can approach ramayana one is it is an itihasa in india we have mainly in 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 you know in, 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 in uh, traditionally india has two itihasas in sanskrit the first itihasa is ramayana of valmiki and the other itihasa is mahabharata of vyasa itihasa means history mixed with story puravrutam katha yuktam itihasam prachakshatam puravrutam means something that happened in the past katha yuktam means some fiction added to it so history added with some story some fiction is itihasa and valmiki's ramayana is an itihasa which narrates the history of an age which is called treta yuga some one very important event that happened in the treta yuga this is the concept of yugas in india four yugas are there first is kurta yuga second is treta yuga fourth third is dwapara yuga fourth is kali yuga and at present we are in the kali yuga these are cycles of creation and after this uh, kali yuga it will be again kurta yuga then it will be again treta yuga so in the treta yuga this great episode of ramayana happened and valmiki chronicled this episode this event and presented valmiki's ramayana to us so this is an itihasa so we can search events happened in treta yuga in valmiki's ramayana then the next way in which we can approach ramayana is as a kavya valmiki is a kavi in the beginning itself i paid my tributes to valmiki kavindram navami valmiki so he is a poet actually he is the first poet ever born on this planet before that there was no poetry so we can approach valmiki's ramayana as a kavya it is called the adi kavya at the end of each sarga of valmiki's ramayana each chapter of valmiki's ramayana you will find a line which denotes the conclusion of that chapter and that line is like this ityarshe valmigiye ramayane adigavye pratham adhyaya balagande pratham sarga ityarshe valmigiye adiga ramayane adigavye pratham sarga balagande pratham sarga in the balaganda the first chapter ends like this which is what are the adjectives given to this pratham uh, sarga it is in, it, 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 it is a part of valmiki's ramayana 
which is the adi kavya and which is the adi kavya written by a rishi r se valmiki ye adi kavya ramayana so this valmiki ye ramayana valmiki is ramayana is the adi kavya and it was created by a rishi also so this valmiki is a rishi as well as a kavi and he was the first kavi so his work is the first kavya adi kavya so we can approach valmiki is ramayana as we approach a kavya a poetry and then we will be able to enjoy it as a poetry all the features of the poetry can be seen in valmiki's ramayana in india poetry has many features like rasa there are nine rasas shringaram hasyam karunam bhimalsam bhayanagam raudram veeram albudam shandam these nine rasas are there there is romance there is uh, there is uh, sorrow there is valor there is uh, there is wonderment there is humor there is uh, uh, what do you say uh, terror so all these rasas can be found in ramayana and we can enjoy it approaching ramayana as a poem then there are all al- figure of speech all the uh, features of poetry can be found in ramayana different alankaras it is called alankaras in sanskrit then these uh, characters are developed in a such a beautiful way that lot of drama is there in ramayana so all these are features of poetry a great epic poem we can call it an epic poem so this is the second way in which we can approach valmiki's ramayana and the third way in which we can approach valmiki's ramayana is as a scripture because valmiki's ramayana gives us all the spiritual knowledge and the, and all the knowledge that are necessary for us to live a righteous life a dharmic life in this world there is a famous verse in valmiki in, in the in the beginning of valmiki's ramayana actually when we start reading valmiki's ramayana we have to perform some rituals as a part of the ritual we chant one shloka the shloka is like this valmiki munisimhasya kavida vanacharino shrinvan rama katha anadam kovanayadi param gati valmiki is depicted as a lion who roams in the forest of rama ramayana and hearing his roar if we listen to his roar of this lion that is valmiki anyone who hears this listen to this roar of valmiki will reach the ultimate state shrinvan rama katha anadam kodayadi param gadi param gadi the extreme state the ultimate state of human existence can be attained by hearing the rama katha anadam the, the the voice or the the sound of ramakatha that is produced by the lion poet valmiki who roams in the forest of poetry kavida vanacharya so this paramgadi the, ex- the the ultimate state of existence can be attained through that through ramakatha ramayana listening to ramayana so this means valmiki ramayana is a is a scripture which will give us the final achievement of human life and it is said in valmiki ramayana itself that when lord rama took birth in this world who is none other than lord vishnu the vedas took birth as valmiki ramayana veda vidye pare bhumsi jate dasharath atmaje veda prachedha sadasi sakshat ramayana atmana when the veda vidya para purusha the person who has to be realized through vedas that is the supreme paramatma when he incarnated as the son of dasharatha veda vidye pare pumsi jate dasharatha atmaje veda prachedha sa asit sakshat ramayana atmara veda itself took birth through valmiki as ramayana sakshat ramayana atmara so vedas itself has taken form as valmiki ramayana so what knowledge we get from vedas can be easily derived from valmiki ramayana 
This is what this verse means. And we can see that there are many Acharyas who has accepted Valmiki's Ramayana as a scripture. For example, the famous Indian tradition of philosophy, Vishishtadvaita, which was which was propounded by Ramanuja Acharya, accepts Valmiki's Ramayana as one of the authentic texts. Their Acharyas, the Acharyas belonging to Vishishtadvaita has written commentaries on Valmiki Ramayana so that the principles of dharma, the principles of spirituality can be made easily available to the public. In the same way, the Dvaita Acharya Madhva, which is another school of philosophy in India, another school of Vedanta in India, Madhva Acharya has written a, a work called Ramayana Tatparya Nirnaya. He has uh, brought out the essence of Ramayana in his work Ramayana Tatparya Nirnaya. So he is a very great Vedanta Acharya who belongs to the Dvaita tradition, the dual, dual the, the philosophy of duality. And this Vishishta Dvaita philosophy, which is another school of uh, Vedanta, that Acharya also has written commentaries. That the Acharyas belonging to that, tra that tradition has also written commentaries on Valmiki Ramayana. So all these proves that Valmiki Ramayana can be approached as a scripture. And by approaching Valmiki Ramayana as a scripture, one can derive spiritual knowledge as well as knowledge regarding dharma, knowledge regarding the nature of the self, nature of the God, nature of the universe, all these philosophical knowledge also can be derived from Ramayana. So what I told you, the essence is that Ramayana can be approached as a poet, as a Itihasa, as a poetry and as a scripture. And each one can derive benefits according to his taste and according to his inclination. So these are the different approaches that we can have when we approach, when we, we when we start studying Ramayana. So now I will uh, like to, I would like to conclude with one, one more topic. What is the message of Ramayana? Amma says the message of Ramayana is to become Rama. So the whole Ramayana teaches us a role model which we can follow and which, which we can aspire to attain, that is Rama. And other great Ajaryas also has said the essence of Ramayana is Ramadivat Bartidavyam Nadu Ravanadivat. There's a great Ajarya called Mammada Bhatta. He has uh, given the essence of Ramayana in this one line. We have to conduct ourselves as Rama and his team, Ramadivat. Nadu Ramanadivat. We should not ever follow the model of Ravana and his team. Ravana, his son Indrajit, his brother Kumbhagarna, and his uh, other uh, relatives. All these people are models of evil people. So we should resist. Their model. You sh we should very, very ruthlessly discard their model, and we have to follow Rama's model, Rama and his uh, men's mo model, the, uh, like Bharata, Lakshmana, Shatrughna, Hanuman. All these people has to be followed in our life. Their models has to be followed in our life. That is the message of Rama. Rama divat varthi dhamyam, nadu Rama So this is the message that Ramayana gives us. So. Now I think I have uh, uh, been talking to you for may maybe for some 50 minutes, and this is only an introduction to Ramayana. And I know that I was uh, I am not I was not able to actually introduce Ramayana because for introducing Ramayana itself we will have to take a lot of time. We, we need a lot of time. But anyway, you have to you have you will have to attend many courses. You have many many uh, many 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 sessions in this course, and through uh, all these sessions we will be giving you a lot of uh, uh, additional knowledge about Ramayana and through those uh, lectures we, you will become more uh, familiarized with Ramayana 
many aspects of Ramayana. I like the many characters. The, even the storyline itself will be elaborately presented to you. Many characters will be introduced to you, and many philosophical aspects in Ramayana. Many other aspects like ecology, like uh, 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 statesmanship, then uh, uh, geography, history. Such many many aspects will be uh, given to you during the ne next uh, few uh, lectures, which are part of this uh, Ramayana Sopanam course. So for the time being, let us wind up here, and uh, I would like to thank all of you for your patient listening. And uh, now I would like to offer my words at Amma's lotus feet, and we will have some interactions. If you have anything to add, please add. If you have to comment, you please comment. If you have to ask some questions, please ask. If I know the answer, I am very, I will be very pleased to answer. So feel free to interact. Om Amrudeshya Dev. Thank you, Swami, for your wonderful words. Now we can have a quick round of question and answer session. If anybody is having uh, any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask. Um, Namaste, Guruji. My name is Varsha. Please. Yes. Uh, so the question I had was, uh, you said uh, different versions of the Ramayana, you introduced us to the different versions of the Ramayana where uh, all over the world. And there you said that there could be a few changes in the relationships alone, a few changes. So does that like in, uh, for example, you gave us an example where uh, I'm not sure is it if you said uh, which country it was, but you said that in one of the epics or one of the versions where Sita is portrayed as the sister of Rama. So does that change the entire course of what happens in the Ramayana or does that remain the same? Now, as I told you, Ramayana is uh, spread over a very vast area of, uh, of, la of land on this globe from uh, maybe from Afghanistan or I don't know, even from Iran, I don't know, from Iran. From anyway, from Afghanistan to to Korea. So that much vast land is uh, uh, spread over on this globe where Ramayana was very, very popular in it in ancient times. Maybe now they are not so much popular, but even in, now you can see in Bali, there is Ramayana stories. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in many, many places, you can see even Ramayana da dramas and all those things. So the, the story becomes a, a, a little unimportant when the message becomes important. So Ramayana is actually not uh, only for describing the story, presenting the story. The main intent of Valmiki writing the Ramayana was to present a personality who was endowed with a lot of qualities. And these qualities has to be made aware of uh, these qualities. The whole world has to be made aware of such qualities and the fact that such qualities can be imbibed by a person can be can be translated into life by a person so when this picture is given to uh, the world they will try at least a little to imbibe these qualities so the main central character rama is the same in all these ramayanas maybe if, if rama does not kill uh, 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 ravana in some of the ramayana it is uh, i think lakshmana who kills ravana in some other Ramayanas, in Jain Ramayana, I think, because they stick very much to uh, non-violence, Ahimsa. So I don't exactly remember, but in one Ramayana uh, or Jain Ramayana or some, some Ramayana, it is not Rama that kills uh, uh, Ravana. Some other character is killing Ravana. So they want to save Rama according to their philosophy. Mm -hmm. Ahimsa is the, the, uh, the, the utmost value that they, uh, they, they, they uh, give importance. So. But what, 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 what means is that Rama is presented as a person who imbibes all the good qualities that a human being should acquire in his life, uh, should translate in his life. And that role model is presented in Ramayana. So we have we should never forget that Rama is a central theme. And as I mentioned you in the first uh, two shlokas, Valmiki Giri Sambhuda, Rama Sagara Gavini. The whole Ramayana is flowing towards Rama only. Mm -hmm. or so our aim is always Rama and all other characters who revolves around Rama as his opponents or as his followers they all 
all all all uh, adds to the value of ramayana so this is the main thing that we have to take away from ramayana so the story may be different many many details may be different that that did not bother us that is what i would like to tell you as the answer to this i hope you are uh, you are satisfied i uh, thank you so much i think it's just a shift in the perspective because whenever uh, till date whenever i have read the ramayana it has always been from the story uh, point of view understanding the story and the looking at various characters but now i think it's a complete shift of perspective uh, it's a very beautiful way that you have uh, presented to me so thank you so much thank you very much for this and so since you asked this question i would like to add one more thing there is a famous work in in sanskrit from kerala which is called narayaniyam which is an abridged version of uh, of uh, bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam and they are in two two chapters this ramayana story is mentioned because in bhagavatam also there is ramayana story so at the end of the second chapter of this uh, narayaniyam this poet of narayaniyam whose name is narayana bhattacharya he concludes the rama story in a verse in that verse he gives the message of ramayana which we have to to uh, to to uh, to uh, to uh, imbibe in our life this, the verse is like this soyam martyavadarah tava khalu niyanam marthi shikshartham evam visleshartham niragas tejanam abhibhavet kama dharma satya rama uh, avadara vishnu avadara as rama is only to teach us a lesson what is that lesson ಶ್ಲೇಷಾರ್ಥರು ನಿರಾಗಸ್ತ್ಯಜನಮಿ ಭವೇತ್ ಕಾಮಧರ್ಮಾದಿ ಸತ್ಯ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಮಚ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಡ್ ಟು ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇವನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಮಚ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಂಜೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಷರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಂಜೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಷರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸಫರ್ ಎ ಲಾಟ್ ಸೊ ರಾಮ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ವೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಓಲ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಡ್ ಟು ಧರ್ಮ that he had to do many things in in human things very 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 what do you say cruel things in the name of dharma you can see in ramayana we will we will mistake it as a cruelty yeah. he has abandoned sita according to the avatar mm-hmm. ramayana he has abandoned his own brother lakshmana who was who was always with him like a shadow he had to abandon even lakshmana in, uh, during uh, uh, towards the fag end of rama's story so this val this dam narayana patakri says that if we are too much attached to this worldly things like dharma artha kama we will have to 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 suffer the 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 the, the uh, severe pain of separation all these things and he adds no chet swatmanu bhudehe konutama manso vikriya chakrabane you are the chakrabane you are vishnu only you don't have any 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 uh, bondages you don't have any sorrow in your life but if you go through ramayana you will find that a lot of sorrow rama has suffered has has a uh, has to undergo so it is only to teach us some lessons that uh, lord vishnu took the avatar of ram so the essence of ramayana is to learn something rama came to teach us something in uh, in human life in human uh, birth we will have to suffer a lot of things so learn from my life and uh, live safely in this world this is the a uh, message that rama rama gives through uh, his story as a human being his life as a so there are many many things to be learned from ramayana the story is very important it is being a kavya the story is very important but as if it is as, uh, if it is approached as a scripture there are other dimensions which are more important than the story thank you sir namashivaya swami ji thank you for a very uh, this uh, i'm pavan lata uh, thank you for a wonderful session uh, on ramayan and uh, you know when we had this uh, uh, mahabharat session we were looking forward uh, for ramayan you know when when we would have a, uh, such a session and uh, uh, i i found it very interesting a uh, lot of new things uh, that i've learned that there are uh, different versions of ramayan which are there and uh, you know how how it helps uh, how it will help in uh, a uh, life and uh, you know because it's it was such an interesting session we i'm, I'm definitely looking out uh, uh, forward to the future sessions so thank you thank you again and namashivaya namashivaya thank you thank you. i hope there are no more questions so uh, i thank our participants for your interest in learning ramayana 
And please note that the next lecture will be on 6th of August 2022. And uh, we'll wind up the session with a Shanti Mantra. Dukkaha samastaha sukhino bhavantu Om lokaha samastaha sukhino bhavantu Om lokaha samastaha sukhino bhavantu Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om